Alright, welcome everyone, we're Semblance of Sanity, I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we're here for Demon Slayer, Slayer Season, Season 1, 1, Episode 13. The escapade in the house continues, mm -hmm. and Zetsu yes. has proven himself in a very set of particular circumstances and a lot of amazing yeah. sakuga. Zetsu, Zenetsu has uh, kind of uh, risen to the occasion. Yes. He's kind of uh, charged uh -huh. his way up to uh, That's right. uh, a higher place within he, he, our he hearts. He really bolted through, right through that demon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, we are currently dealing with Kyogai, this uh, unique X-12 Demon Moons demon Mm -hmm. who was rejected by Muzan because of uh, complications regarding his capacities issues. and performance. Yes. Yeah. So mm -hmm. he's looking for uh, people with special blood, Marichi blood. Right. Marichi or what have Marichi. you. Marichi. Yeah, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. And it is a very real possibility. Tanjiro is one of these people with special blood. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now, it's also a possibility that Nezuko is as well. Uh, potentially but but what's what's curious here is then the fact that there was this demon infighting aspect right. here mm -hmm. and yet because demons can't kill demons without you know uh -huh. special weapons and such they were doomed to a hellish yep. internal mm -hmm. kind of battle royale within this maze of a house yeah but one so, of the drum things got ripped out and now the kid has it mm -hmm. and there you go he's yep. been able to survive just by Yep, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Tanjiro and uh, uh, Boar Boy yeah. uh, kind of came to... They, to they kind of butted heads a, a bit. bit but... Yeah, like, because this, this new character, I, I love him, mm -hmm. I love him, but his attitude seems a bit boorish. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so... You, you, you know. could even say he's a hog for screen time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep, yeah. uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, that was a good one. He he came up with that earlier, yeah. but but yeah, yeah. So uh, y'all, without further ado, let's get into this. All right, everyone, be sure to go check out the reaction portion of the video in the description below, and then come back here for the discussion. All right, we have okay. been introduced to. Uh, I, I would say probably the, the, the full kind of party dynamic at this point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have Zenitsu, the boy that will protect... The and, Chad. And like, just absolutely like, hold fast uh -huh. to the kindness of those around him. Yep. If, if he hears even the slightest bit of goodness in you, he's like, you know what? I'm mm -hmm. going to choose to believe in you. And it's, and it's crazy because what we've seen of Zenitsu up till this point is, mm -hmm. you know, an absolute coward. Right, and and he still is that when he like with a lot of things like with the with the demons and stuff. Even after killing the demon while unconscious, you know, like he was still just the terrified person that asked mm -hmm. the little kid to go investigate the room instead of him. You yep. know, yep. But apparently, apparently, in certain circumstances, when push comes to shove, mm -hmm. he absolutely will not yield, and that is admirable. That is really admirable. It's really admirable, and it's when. Yeah. And and I think it's important that it wasn't something where, um, where he knew what was in the box. Like like he knew that there was a oh, demon in there. He, he knew, knew there was a demon in there, right? But he didn't know the story behind it, right? He, well, he doesn't. Yeah, yeah. Right. He, yeah. He he knows yeah. enough though about Tanjiro to know what the story has to be something around. Right. It has to be something regarding his own kindness. Something that. Yeah. Exactly. Something yeah. that the person of Tanjiro who mm -hmm. he observed, he would find. Mm -hmm. honorable whatever was in this yeah, box exactly it, regardless of whether or not it was a demon or not or what mm -hmm. what have you but right. um so the, I'm, i wanted want to go through all the character yeah, dynamics yeah. here we have nezuko who is the one that is probably the one that needs the most protecting and also the least protecting uh-huh because she is probably going to end up being one of the strongest members of the yes group i would say and and the most sort of unkillable except in situations like this or if they ever say face moves on again <laughs> But yeah, just just you know, yeah, strong, strong demons. Mm -hmm. But even then, demons can't really kill demons. That's right. more the terrifying thing about it. Um, uh, -huh. uh, then you have obviously Tanjiro, who right. is the boy who will never give up, but specifically is the one who is showing so much. I would say um, consideration and I would say empathy for those around him that he even finds time to affirm the demon that he's yeah. about to decapitate. Uh huh. And yep. yep. 
in some ways, what's what's cool about this is we almost immediately are getting his contradiction as well, which is when he sees something that reminds him of his family's demise, of their slaughter, mm -hmm. you see his his time for words, essentially, for talking ends. Yeah. And yep. he... It's like, no, this has to stop. Right. Just, now, yeah. will he use some words? Probably, because this guy's sure. a demon slayer too, you know, mm -hmm. a human. Right. But, mm -hmm. you know, there's yeah. that. But he's using action first. Right. Despite and, the fact that he is incredibly wounded. Yes. Like, And then we have Boar Boy uh, here, who we don't know why yet, but he has a very single track mind with regards yes. to the things that he does. He bore charges. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Overzealous. He bore charges directly into the conflict of things. Right. Probably because it's manly or something like that. Yeah, you yeah know? exactly. But mm -hmm. um, he also seems to be like on a like on an aggro chain, essentially. He aggroed into sure. this instance here yeah. because there were demons nearby. Yeah. Oh, Nezuko's nearby. I got an aggro vibe, so yeah, I'm yeah. going directly. Uh -huh. I Red is dead and just... He's basically, like, yeah. a guy that got lost in, like, a lobby kind of zone in an MMO of the enemy faction and is just running around killing NPCs as they spawn kind of aimlessly. Oh but it's yeah. like, bro, you realize that no one cares about those NPCs. Right. You're not actually helping the overall well, and goal of your, and your is, faction. Is there going to be some question or... or Because, like, in, in, the case of, in the case of Tanjiro, right, mm -hmm. we know why... He is the way he is, right? Right. In the case of Zenitsu, we saw a bit more in this episode mm -hmm. of why he is the way he is, right? Well, we're definitely going to find out what it is with Boar Boy, too. And we're definitely going to find out what it is with Boar Boy. Yeah. But maybe that's that's where it sort of hits the other end of the balance. Like, if Tanjiro is in the middle, right? And oh. and then and then Zenitsu is on one side, and then Boar Boy balances out Zenitsu, right? So, so maybe, like, I'm thinking maybe oh. Boar Boy had... A similar experience to Tanjiro, but it just ended badly, right? So now he's sort of like maybe the the traditional kind of like, okay, I have to kill all the demons kind of a thing, right? Um, hmm. And and hence you know hence his his dedication to this. Sure. Um, the next episode is called the House of the Wisteria Crest, right, which, which is the flower that yeah. uh, wards off demons, scares uh -huh. them away essentially. Right. So. That could be related to Boar Boy's family. Could be related to something else. Could but be related like, to Zenitsu because he's from a wealthy family, at least. Um, I think. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. <sighs> hmm. Yeah, I don't know actually if we've got really too much actual info at all, mm -hmm. really on on uh, Zenitsu's family. I feel like we got a little bit of it. Right. I think was... at the beginning they they made mention of the fact that he was. He was from a wealthy-ish family, and he was basically sent to I don't, become a demon slayer to sort of, like, make a man out of him kind of a thing. I No, I think that's entirely headcanon. Oh, really? That was never that was never something I, I, I don't... I don't remember that actually being something that was actually said, if anything. Oh, right, yeah, I think anything, it was because I, the... I kind of had that as an idea. Well, well, and also because they, there was the mention of the mansion, I think that was that was where I got it. Because I was assuming, like, yeah, because in his introductory episode, it was like, oh, the next episode's going to be the something mansion, right? So I'm thinking, oh, it's going to be, you know, Zenitsu's family's place or something. Mm. Um, yeah, it's just a good sure. thing to make sure that yeah. that's a... Uh... Mm -hmm. So um, I, I get tons of headcanons surrounding these characters, and... Yeah, I'm just making sure it doesn't contradict right, right. actual reality. So yeah, we have barely anything on uh -huh. Zenitsu's actual actual family. Right. If um, anything, we have they've maybe been characterized a bit because of um uh his his you know sort of recap talking about his experience with them and whatnot. But that's my when, when did he do that? Best. Talking about, you know, him how he could always, you know, he had really good hearing and things like that, and he sometimes you know, heard what people... Yeah, but that wasn't... Was that his family? I don't think that was his family at all. I think that was almost entirely just a general thing about people. Like, as far as Hearing I... what they said about him when he was asleep? The, uh... Moments where he's talking about, uh... Uh... Yeah, uh, one time... 
one time I knew what people said while I was asleep, and that creeped everyone. Oh out. yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. He's yeah. never he's never really spoken about. Yeah, his, huh? Interesting. His family. Yeah. If anything, what I get this vibe from him is that he's alone in some ways because of his own character flaw. Sure. People, yeah. people kind of drop him and give him up. They, they give that sort of disgusted look of, uh. Yeah, yeah and, and in some ways if he is a, you know, a demon slayer, that's, that's a thing of where he is set off on a goal now. So mm -hmm. maybe, maybe there was an aspect of people trying to get rid of him for that. But anyway, um, uh, speculating about him we don't have too much might be a little bit of a lost cause here but there was some there was some really cool stuff that they did with Kyogai where they basically decided to give him the ah he was backstoried mm -hmm. at he at the time of death but this wasn't something related to Muzan this was uh, something yeah. related to him uh -huh. maybe before being a demon well i believe so because that that seemed to be where it started you know um that's what i would assume because right? otherwise because he was you know behaving like a regular human before then um well we didn't get too much he just kind of sat there and well, listened to the guy but the fact that him. he was working on writing and things like that that's yes. not something that a demon would be doing right you know like as far as oh. we know he wasn't eating the person he didn't look like a demon and and from what we've seen i yeah. don't think demons can really hide their demon appearance like like that doesn't seem to be a thing that just any demon could do uh that is, that is a good point like yeah he 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 definitely huh like i think i like it, it might not be explicitly stated but i'm pretty sure that they're trying to imply yes that that, that was when that he was became, when he became a, demon. a demon which but is interesting is, for that world is, building right because... that is very fascinating for that yeah uh -huh. because muzan didn't create or right. turn him into a demon then right. if that's the case which is yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. So... Where do they come from, then? Like, well, because this is this is something we haven't seen before, and, and like, yeah. maybe that was something that, like, I mean, we don't know how from there he ended up becoming one of the, the 12 demon blood moons or whatever. Yeah, um, I think that part's just kind of yeah, self-explanatory. Yeah. Right, yeah. But, but it's something where, like, is, is his... The way that he turned into a demon? I'm guessing that's not common, because... Mm -hmm you know muzan is generally considered to be the 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 main instigator of people becoming demons right so right so but doesn't that seem also a little bit like like he's taking short, credit for things that he didn't do well not that but like doesn't it seem also a little bit short-sighted to assume that a single individual would be oh, the yeah. cause for a species to yep mm -hmm. over a thousand years it's like they like if that's the case and you have a whole core of people going around killing demons, even if demons are very difficult to actually kill. Sure. It would be very difficult for Muzan to stay in hiding. Oh, no. I, I, like, I totally think he could he could just get away by being fast, smart, or clever. I'm just talking about there being actually that many demons at all. It's sure. Just the idea that yeah. how would they spread outside of Japan, well, for instance? Well, maybe they don't really. Maybe that's one of the reasons why, mm -hmm. like, like in, in where Tanjiro grew up, mm -hmm. right... That was that was a thing that that they knew about, right? Mm -hmm. You know, is that okay? Demons exist, right? But in the city, you know, people yeah. people didn't really seem to understand it, right? And I can imagine that if you go further away, then they would have absolutely no clue. Sure, it's an underlying war that's going yeah. on between. It's it's a very common thing in a lot of stories where the the regular public mm -hmm. doesn't know what's actually going and, on. And if there's but, a limited population, then that is a good reason for why the public, you know, it, it's a lot easier to keep it a secret, you know, right. But the, the question remains, mm -hmm. was this basically like a spin-off Dororo episode that we only got to see like the the oh, uh, like uh -huh. a, the, the climax of where basically you have the father, the the family figure, whoever that was, basically curse the kid mm -hmm. to becoming a demon because their hatred, their yeah. mm -hmm. um, self hatred, their whatever their whatever their feelings were at the time broke the barrier between humans and demons uh -huh. they became a demon on the spot yep. with the freaking uh thing in their chest thing yeah. in yep. yeah in kyogai's chest like yep. that's something that i think almost almost definitely says that it's something where uh uh where they became a demon here like probably because that that was something it almost seemed like wasn't even physically there. Yeah, I don't think we've happened. 
with all the stuff that we saw from Kyogai, I don't think we ever saw him leave the house. Like, we never saw him outdoors, right? And it's possible that in, like, the flashback with Muzon, that was a different place, you know? But oh. but it could be the same place. No, it you're could, right. You know, and, and that he's just been bringing people here, hoping that eventually he'll be able to break free of his shackles and become something. But Whoa. because maybe the way that he got turned into a demon was something where he was all focused on the negatives that other people said about him, he wasn't able to fully embrace his true nature because it was just done as a reactionary thing. It wasn't something that he uh -huh. fully had decided um right but but regardless this might be them the 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 show kind of showcasing that this is how muzan got started right right there are ways you that know, demons can come about other than right. muzan because muzan had to come from somewhere. muzan had to come from somewhere yeah, yeah. exactly um, which makes just sense you have exactly. to cover that at some point yep yep unless you want to have some some you know thing that came before that's some bigger thing than demons sure. or whatever right sure Okay, so or something. yeah, um, having having the focus be after this little mini mini kind of encounter of sorts, mini arc encounter, having it be given so much focus for this mm -hmm. for this character that we're then supposed to see uh, almost in a lot of ways the tragedy that is basically sure. people becoming demons. Mm -hmm. There are definitely those that have malicious intent and become demons out of maybe striking some kind of bargain with Muzan. Sure. But mm -hmm. there are also those that encounter in some ways the demon that's inside of all of humanity. Right. And it just makes that uh, more uh, vicious side of humanity reach uh, reach up out of the, I would mm -hmm. say, almost like the, almost like the grave, basically, like a, like, hmm. a, like a metaphorical zombie, just like dragging interesting dragging the just nastiness of whatever that person is down into the grave with them it's sure it's ugh. and and it's this you know and, and because tanjiro is in this unique situation where he has a sister who is a demon and yet you know he absolutely cares about her and doesn't want anything bad to happen to her uh-huh it gives him a perspective to see these demons as more than just demons, right? Something that, you know, right. someone like, say, Boar Boy, right, would could, not. Could not. Yeah, no. yeah, he wouldn't be able to see him like that. Um, and yeah. and it means an awful lot to this demon. And, and you almost wonder if the very fact that Tanjiro saw him as more than just a demon, if that was one of the things that helped him defeat him, right? Because, like, in the part where um, where he landed on the on the ground and he avoided the, the, the papers and all that stuff... Uh -huh. The demon hesitated, right? Like, like mm -hmm. maybe, like, because yeah. there, there were there were points where mm -hmm. where the demon probably could have pressed the attack, and, yeah, and didn't because of we saw how that. Tanjiro was acting. Yeah, we saw that actually. One of the main points that um, the attack patterns had was that once uh, Sanjiro, Sanjiro Tanjiro got uh, discombobulated, mm -hmm. the uh, the turning and what have you. He would send a raking claw attack, essentially, mm -hmm. up to attack Tanjiro, where he was right relatively, landed, yeah. relatively immobilized for a split second. Mm -hmm. Once those attacks were being directed on the wall or the floor or the whatever, the surface mm -hmm. that had the paper, though, uh -huh. one of the things that I kind of found to be rather rather interesting here mm -hmm. and it's something i kind of wanted to go back and check is they started striking the air not the ground well, they started striking the air not the ground that's one thing yes but there was also this aspect of when they were rotating ridiculously quickly mm -hmm. all the papers had circulated out everywhere from amongst the bookshelves and right. um drawers that had kept them there mm -hmm. and during that time, he had no problem having them strike the ground. But there was a point before they had actually come out of the dresser drawers or what have you. Oh, uh-huh. I think it was literally shown um, in this episode when that happened. Yeah. Because they're not on the ground everywhere here. Yep, I think this is it. This is it here. No, no, wait, that's not it. There's just a part where mm -hmm. you see the ground, the air, all the areas, and there is no. There's no papers anywhere. There's no right. papers anywhere. Well, and and a part of me wonders what, because I can't quite remember. Was it the claw strike itself that actually sent the papers everywhere? Because if so, that'd be really interesting. Because it's Here sort it is, of yeah, yeah. It's sort of like 
Yeah, so it yeah, cuts, it was. Yeah, it cuts through. So, so he actually scattered the papers everywhere, which is like this cool thing of him. Like it's it's he lost poetic. control. He lost control and, and attacked the thing that he valued the most. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, and then that ended up being his downfall. Right. Right. Um, so yeah. in in the same respect that the demon blood art and what have you mm -hmm. was something that was very specific to his his passion, his hobby. We find out that the hobby itself was something that he had well before being a demon. In some mm -hmm. ways, probably, probably around or maybe even before being a writer. The fact that the uh, the person in his past, it was not really relevant who it was, uh -huh. basically was like, you should go back to playing the... Yeah, uh, yeah. The, the the drums or whatever those things were. And yeah, yeah. You not, not that you're, you're not that you can teach, teach anyone that. Teach yeah. anyone that. Mm -hmm. But basically saying your writing hobby, if it you know, whatever whatever mm -hmm. he was calling it in his derogatory way, is something that I don't value. But I somewhat value this more traditional thing that you can do here that doesn't end up using tons of paper and ink or what have you. Uh-huh. Which is then funny because you could say if the words that this guy spoke to him like pierced him, oh, it's then a visual thing that the sure. musical instruments would be pierced, stuck inside of him, right? Uh huh. Things that he would be forced to play, yeah. Mm -hmm. Not his yep. writing, yep. Yeah, that's that's good. Yeah, because in some ways he mm -hmm. internalized the lack of value that this guy put on his writing. Right, and then mm -hmm. basically was like, "Fine, yep. then I'll play this. I'll play this for the rest of my life. I'll play this for all of time." Oh boy, will that make you happy? <laughs> oh, it just it oh, just kills boy. me. It kills yeah. me. And I I love that we contained the uh, the the writing mm -hmm. uh, kind of tie into this in this episode, although the uh musical bit being something that's just this striking question just by his character design mm -hmm. makes me love the actual just design of this demon so much more is that it was staring at us all the all along that there was a crippling backstory within this demon because all the sure. other ones that we've seen almost have this beauty to them right you notice that a lot of the other ones they they always seem to have this like well put together and yeah they because the the drums didn't look like they uh were supposed to be there they looked like they you know like he was wounded by them like you know like they had been infused into him somehow you know right right and and whether that was a you know it didn't self look done thing right yeah right, right. And whether that was a self done thing or not which you could get into that whole debate about it too sure. um yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Good when stuff. I when I say the demons are beautiful what I meant was that more the uh the stronger demons that we've seen just in in the past uh -huh. always had this kind of radiant aspect to them even the two that weren't even actually part of the 12 demon moons they each had this aspect of them that was almost i would say yeah like 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 beautiful Whole in, some, in ways. some way right yeah like, yeah like it wasn't twisted or anything like that right yeah. it wasn't something like the big sludge guy right in the uh -huh. on the mountain on the mountain or what have you yeah so maybe Maybe this is actually. I'm gonna go a little okay. uh, here. What if actually Muzan, uh, Muzan demons are the ones that basically get that, like fair and oh, beautiful sure. and you know Michael Jackson. <laughs> this kind of, world is imperfect. Yeah. Only I could cleanse it of its impurities and, and make, make it, it as beautiful as me. me. But the other demons that basically become demons out of some tragedy trauma or something horrible okay. that happens in their past it shows it shows mm -hmm. but that's those types of demons because remember the okay. one that urukodaki had been sending students unwillingly yeah. to i don't think muzan created that one um, was there a point where they made a big deal about uh, I don't think it was mentioned because I well because Muzan wasn't introduced at that right point. yeah it was just sort of okay you know it's a it's a demon on the mountain I think um, I don't know they could get get more into that later possibly yeah yeah okay well uh, y'all we've got ourselves uh, Zenitsu yep. just being the goodest boy and protecting oh, yeah. Mexico oh yeah and then we've got Boar Boy and Tanjiro mm -hmm. facing off and we still don't know Boar Boy's name <laughs> I I want. I want 
uh, Nezuko mm -hmm. to pop out of the box once they move into the forest and they're out of the sunlight mm -hmm. and have basically Boar Boy just have a moment and just go, she's so adorable. Oh my gosh. Like, <laughs> like, like it's not actually that Zenitsu is the one that is like, I must protect, you know, <laughs> it is actually Boar Boy who's just like, Oh my god. Although this beauty. Although, I would give my life for her. That would be <laughs> awesome. That would be awesome. I would not be surprised at all though, if it was something where Tanjiro, because of his wounds and things like that, he was right. actually having trouble defeating Boar Boy. Right. And then, you know, the sun goes down or whatever, it's a long fight or something. And then and then Nezuko comes out and then Zenitsu before, you know, he was simply just doing it as a I will stay here and take your blows and all that stuff, but I will not give in. Suddenly he goes into serious Zenitsu mode. <laughs> like, no, probably oh, not. Man. Probably not. Yeah. Yeah, well, but, we'll see. Oh, we'll see. It'll be interesting It'll be to see cool. what they do. Yeah. But yeah, y'all, thank you so much for watching this episode's reaction and discussion. If you want to see the next episode's reaction and discussion right now, go check out the link in the description below for our Patreon. You can get on early access there. You can watch full-length timer reactions there. And all this comes with Discord access. You can chat with us in the community there about this show, about anime in general. And you can also talk with Jacob about the sci-fi novel that he wrote. You're... I wrote a book called Battle Lines, and it's really cool, and it's awesome, and it's on Amazon. The link is in the description down below. It's in both hardback and ebook. Go check it out. Yeah, so if any of that interests you, we'll see you there. But until then, we're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we'll see you all next time. time.